This week, we're talking about motion sickness. So motion sickness often results when your brain receives two conflicting signals regarding the motion that you feel and the motion that you can see. The three most common combinations of conflicting inputs that cause people to experience motion sickness are motion that can be felt but not seen, motion that can be seen but not felt, and two different motions that can be both felt and seen but that don't match up. Probably the most common example of the first one, motion that can be felt but not seen, is people who'd get motion sickness when they try and read a book in a car. Staring down at the book, you can't see the motion of the car, but you can still feel it, and so this can make you feel motion sick. Similarly, people who experience air sickness on airplanes can feel the motion of the plane, but because the plane windows are so small, you often can't see the corresponding motion out the window. An example of motion that can be seen but not felt is when people get motion sick watching movies. Sometimes if you're watching a movie and there are great sweeping movements and the camera is jutting around, you can see that motion, but you're just sitting in your theater chair, and so that discordance can cause motion sickness. The third combination of motion that can be both felt and seen is a little harder to find a common example of. The classic example is the Coriolis effect, and think of a scenario in which gravity is simulated by a centrifugal force. So think about astronauts in those big spinning training chairs. While the astronauts are both seeing and feeling motion, their visual reference points are changing because they're rotating, and so the motion that they feel and the motion that they see don't exactly line up. So why do these discordant stimuli make you want to vomit? Well, one popular hypothesis is that your brain is confused by the two differing inputs and thinks that it is hallucinating. And one of the common causes of hallucination is poison. So your brain thinks, holy shnikes, I've been poisoned, and tries to vomit up the poison to help keep you alive. But you haven't been poisoned, you're just sitting in a car and you've now made all the other people in the car wish that they weren't in the car with you. Now this leads to a pretty interesting question about how we perceive motion. We all know how we perceive vision with our eyes, but we actually perceive motion using our vestibular system in our inner ear. First, our vestibular system has three semicircular canals, all positioned at right angles to each other, which help us to perceive motion on three different axes. Those semicircular canals are filled with a fluid called endolymph, and they contain small hair-like projections known as cilia. When you move, the fluid in those canals also moves, bending the cilia. The cilia then take that motion, translate it into an electrical signal, and send it to your brain to tell it that motion is happening. Feeling a little stumbly after a couple of cocktails? Well, the alcohol in your drink can actually change the density of the endolymph, which can throw off your motion perception. The vestibular system also contains the otolithic organs, the saccule and the utricle, which help sense equilibrium and linear acceleration. These organs contain otolithic membranes. Now imagine a cell layer with hair fibers sticking out of it. Those hair fibers are embedded in a gelatinous layer, and on top of that gelatinous layer are calcium carbonate crystals. Those calcium carbonate crystals are called otoconia, and this layer is the otolithic membrane. These crystals make the top of the gelatinous layer heavier than the bottom, so when you tilt your head, these crystals all slide, distorting the gelatinous layer, therefore distorting those hair cells. This distortion of the hair cells tells your brain that a tilt has occurred. This membrane also senses changes in acceleration. If you imagine that gelatinous layer with the heavy crystals on top in a car, when you speed forwards, that heavy layer is going to be displaced, distorting the gelatinous layer, distorting the hairs inside, and telling your brain that acceleration has occurred. So the next time you reach for that paper bag in the seat back in front of you, just try and remind your brain that airplane food isn't actually poison. Go forth, do science.